let's open up a file so that we can get our workspace similar. So your version of Illustrator looks the same as mine. Because the trouble sometimes with this first start screen here is it can be different for everybody. So let's go to File and let's go to Open. Now what you want to do is you want to find the exercise files you've downloaded. Here they're here, exercise files, illustrator. And in here, I want you to find the file called getting started and then click the open button. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we need to reset our workspace just so that we're all looking the same. And we can do it along the top here. There's this little app bar, okay? And yours might say something different in here, but, but drop this down. And what you want to do is you want to click on essentials. You want to see if there's a tick next to it. So click on it. And the second thing you want to do is come down to that exact same menu and go to Reset Essentials. And that'll just put it back to kind of a default setting. Now, if yours still looks different, it might be that you're using an earlier version of Illustrator. And what that's going to mean for you is that you can continue along with this course. Say 90% of the course is going to be still fine for you. What you're going to have a little bit of trouble with is finding out where some of these menus are because they've moved around just a tiny bit. What I mean by that, if I grab my type tool and I click and I start typing, you can see over here it automatically says, here's my character panel and there's my font and font sizes. This properties panel did not exist in earlier versions of Illustrator. Super handy, I love it. But in earlier versions, what you're going to have to do is when I'm looking at this character panel or things in this appearance, what you're going to have to do is go up to window and open them separately. This is how older versions worked. If I go down to type, there's character. Okay, so it's the same panel, can you see? He matches him, but he's just in a separate little window. So that's going to be a fun game if you're using, say, CS6 or CS5. But don't worry, you can continue on with most of this course. So just make sure you've set to essentials and that you've reset them. Next thing, let's look at the units and increments. Now to change the units you're using, what you need to do is have nothing selected. The best way to have nothing selected is grab your black arrow, the selection tool here, and just click off in this gray area here just so that nothing is selected. Watch when I select on something, this properties panel changes, but when I click on the background here into kind of like no man's land, it gives me general overall settings for the document. In this case, it's currently set to centimeters. Okay, I'm going to change mine and work in inches in this course. But let's say we're working, say, with some web or UI design work in Illustrator. You can click on pixels. It doesn't really matter, but this is the place to change it. It's in a slightly different place than, say, a lot of the other Adobe products like Photoshop or InDesign where it's kind of done in the preferences. So that's just something to note here. So I'm going to pick inches. One last thing we'll do before we move on to start making things is just some basic navigation. We'll cover a lot more during the course, but zooming in and out and moving around is quite important. So there is a long way. You can use this, see this little magnifying glass here, the zoom tool, click on that, and you click once, click twice, Can okay, just keep zooming in. To zoom out, you can hold down the Option key on a Mac or the Alt key on a PC. So to look down at your keyboard, if you're using a Mac, it's the Option key. If you're a PC, it's the Alt key. And you can see, see the little icon changes from a plus to a minus, and then I just click again with my left mouse button. Okay, and it just zooms out. So that's the long way. What you'll find is I'm not going to cover too many shortcuts really early on, but the one everyone uses to zoom in and out is on a Mac, hold down your Command key and tap plus. If you're on a PC, hold down the control key and tap plus. Okay, so plus is just up and your numbers kind of along the top of your keyboard, there's a plus and a minus. So minus zooms out, plus zooms in. One last little bit of navigation is to move around, say I want to see kind of down a bit further. See these little sliders on the side here? Okay, it'll look a little different on a PC, but there'll be a little kind of a slider bar that you can go up and down. Same with down the bottom here, you can go left and right. Okay, that is the long painful way. That is fine when you're new, you can do that way. But let's do one last little shortcut is if you hold down the space bar, can you see at the moment I'm on my selection tool? Okay, but if I hold space bar down, look at the icon that changes, becomes a little hand. Okay, so space bar down becomes a little hand and that just means click, hold and drag. Okay, so space bar down, clicking the mouse and just dragging it around. All right, that's it for the boring navigation stuff in Illustrator. I will remind you of those shortcuts throughout the course, so don't worry. But now, boring stuff over, let's get into the super exciting world of creating things in Illustrator using shapes and lines. All right, I'll see you in the next video. Hi there, in this video we are going to set up our documents so that we can start redrawing this cute little sheriff penguin using all our shapes. So we're going to create a new document, show you how to bring in and use layers to lock this pencil drawing in the background so that we can redraw over the top of it. All right, let's get started. All right, first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new document to draw our penguin on. Let's go to File. Let's go to New. 
Now in here we've got a little bunch of presets, okay, along the top here you've got, like if you want to design a mobile phone, kind of a website, we're going to start with print, okay, and in here we're going to pick letter, and along here we're going to change our units to inches, we're going to make a landscape, and what you'll find is yours is probably twirled up down the bottom here, see where it says advanced options, click on that word, and this little extra option opens up, okay, and we'll change our color mode to RGB. Now we're not going to cover the full differences between RGB and CMYK, but just so you know, if you're new, RGB gives you a bigger color field, okay, more richer colors. CMYK is a little bit more washed out. But if you're going to eventually become a commercial illustrator or commercial designer using Illustrator, you probably need to research a little bit more the differences between the two. But the short version is just use RGB. Even if you're going to commercial print, printers have some amazing software to convert it to RGB, which they need, and often it can give you a better result. So RGB, perfect for pretty much all circumstances these days. Let's click Create. All right, next thing we're going to do is save our document. So next up, let's go to File and let's save our document. And what I want to do is, now if you're on a Mac like I am, okay, you might have to click this little arrow to see a few more of the options here. Okay, if you're on a PC, things are very similar but a little different. Okay, now depending on your ability, um, you might just save it onto your desktop and just leave it at that. What I'm going to do is be very organized and click on New Folder, and I'm going to put it into here called Class Files. Okay, I'm going to put a folder on my desktop called Class Files, I'm going to call this one my Penguin. I'm not even sure if that's how you spell penguin. Looks good enough for me. So if we're on a PC, it's slightly different. I think there's just an icon along the top here that says like new folder, hover above them. Create a new folder called class files, name our document penguin, and let's click save. Okay, these illustrator options, just leave them all by default and click okay. So to get started, what we've got is I've drawn, hand drawn our penguin, and we're gonna redraw over the top of it. And it's a really common way that I work and a lot of illustrators work, is that it's easier to draw on my notebook, take a photo of it or a scan and actually just draw over the top of it in Illustrator. It's not how everyone works, you can go straight into Illustrator, but it's gonna give us at least a template to draw over the top of, just to make it a bit easier for us now. So to make that happen, let's go to File, and let's go to Place. Place is the word, it's interchangeable with import. Illustrator likes to call it place though. So file place, we'll bring in our image. Let's find the exercise files that you've downloaded. And in there should be one called penguin.jpg. Now before you click place, what we're gonna do is click on this word template. I'll show you what it does. Let's make sure template is clicked. Let's click place. And what ends up happening is with my black arrow, if I click off in the background, can you see I can't move this image. So what it does is it brings it in, it puts it on its own layer, it locks that layer and dims it down a little bit so it's easier to draw over the top of. Now mine's put it in the middle of this document and um, it really, yours is probably off to the side here a little bit. So let's look at kind of unlocking that layer and moving it around. So up here in your layers panel, layer one is where we're gonna do our drawing. This layer here called template, you can kind of see template penguin, what it's done is it's created a layer and has locked it. Okay, so it means I can't move it around, which is super handy. But let's say I want to move it over a little bit. Let's click on the locking icon, click on this now. Now, okay, using my black arrow, just clicking and dragging the center anywhere. Okay, now it's unlocked. Okay, so hopefully you can see the benefits of using that template. I can lock it again now, go back to my layer one. Okay, make sure it is highlighted and I can do my drawing on that layer. And this helpful little layer is just underneath, dimmed down a little bit, the opacity is down a little bit, and it's locked, making it easy to draw. All right, so that's it for setting up our document, just getting it ready for drawing over the top of. What we'll do in the next video is that we'll start drawing with our shapes, okay, lines and rectangles to make our cute little penguin that for some unknown reason is a sheriff, mainly because I needed to show you how to draw a star. But let's do that in the next video. Hi there, in this video we are going to redraw this pencil penguin, okay, over the top using shapes and lines using Illustrator, we'll turn him off and yeah, it's a short little squat penguin, but look how happy he is. Alright, let's get started. Alright, to get started what we're going to do is we're going to grab our rectangle tool over here in my toolbar. If you can't see the rectangle tool, it might be that if you click and hold this kind of where this option might be, it might be set to something like the ellipse tool. And to change it back to the rectangle tool, all you do is click, hold, 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 hold until these options appear. And then just...